let me start this video by explaining that when I say orange, I'm not talking about the fruit. I spent several days re-watching the anime Orange and wow. The entire 13 episodes are an emotional trip. It touches on everything from bullying to regret, and I don't mean regret as in like not getting the guy or girl, I mean regret as in regret of one's own actions. I mentioned this in my Hyoka video, which by the way is officially outperforming everything in its first week or two since upload, so thank you all for that. But Orange is an anime that lets you get away from that constant wait and see feeling that most anime have these days. There's no it's the last three episodes, so let's finally advance the plot type of scenario here either. Orange takes you on an emotional journey from episode one. Once you board the train, there are no stops. It doesn't take long for the anime to reveal what it's about or where the story is headed, leaving little guesswork. Immediately we're introduced to Naho and friends, 10 years in the future. And this is where we learn about the letters in the time capsule they all wrote to their past selves. The goal? Prevent Kakaru from taking his own life. Like I said, there's about as little guesswork in the storyline as there is to making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Where the guesswork becomes more like homework is in the plot, however. Now, you might be saying, but aren't those terms the same thing, just a different way of saying the sequence of events in a story? Actually, they're not the same. Think of the plot of a story as the actual contents of the sandwich. It's not so much about how you got there as what's in it. The storyline is like the process of making the sandwich. Also, I do see the 50 some odd of you with upload notifications on. Thanks for being goats. 1,000 subscribers is literally right around the corner now. Like, that is so unbelievable. I didn't say it in my last video, but thank you guys. I've got a lot coming up here very soon, so your support really does mean a lot. No more six week breaks. So let's talk about Orange and why this slice of life romance is quite a bit different. I didn't structure my Hyoka video like I have others, but I think we can do that here. The big things to focus on with this anime are its portrayal of guilt and regret, friendship and happiness, and what it means to actually be a friend. There's a lot of humanity involved with this one and understanding one's own emotions and feelings, all while trying to protect those very same emotions and feelings of someone close yet so far. Guilt is one of the biggest drivers of the anime's plot, lending a metaphorical helping hand to the storyline. It is through Kakaru's guilt of losing his mother and the things he said to her that weave this intricate web of, well, I should say delicate, very fragile emotions. Kakaru's guilt is how the plotline connects to the storyline. We have to see his guilt and how it affects him before we can understand everyone else's feelings. When it comes to the storyline, it is the acquisition of guilt in the first place that directly leads to Kakaru's self-doubt, guilt, and even moments of self-pity. Understanding Kakaru's background is important here too, having moved from Tokyo to a small town away from the city. We find out early on that his mother was ill and apparently quite a bit more than Kakaru had realized. After her passing, he feels immense regret for not having been there, and it becomes the main driving force in his decision to take his life in the timeline we see 10 years in the future. We find out towards the end of the anime that his mother only wanted what was best for him, but no matter how badly she wanted to, she could never give him the life she wanted. She didn't want him to get hurt. This all connects back to episode 1 where Naho reads in her letter that she should not invite Kakaru out with her friends and the group simply because his mother would pass away that same day and he wasn't there for her. He texted her he would be going out with some friends and said some things he really probably shouldn't have. That example is on screen. This becomes the fuel for his regret. As much as he hated being confined to school and straight home, he still loved his mother. There is no bond stronger than the bond between parent and child, no matter how crazy things get sometimes. Kakaru took advantage of that, and it was truly just a case of bad luck in this event. But bad luck isn't an excuse for the wrongs we commit when we aren't thinking. This is unfortunately a lesson Kakaru had to learn the hard way. However, it's not just Kakaru's guilt and regret that drive the storyline that feeds the plot. The plot is about what it took to reach the end, how he made it to the end of the story. Yes, Kakaru had it tougher than almost anyone in the anime, but imagine how Sua must have felt, giving up a future with Naho to ensure that someone who'd once been a complete stranger could have a future too. In the future timeline, Sua and Naho get married and start a family. In the present timeline with Kakaru, that future does not exist. 
If you are in Suwa or Naho's shoes, some of you are probably wondering if it would be worth it to give up a happy life to ensure someone else gets to live happily. Think about it this way though, there's no practical way to tell the future. We base our guesses off of observed trends and analyses of past events, rooted in hypotheses or established theories. This isn't something anyone in the group has the power to figure out in this case. We don't know how if Kakuru's life were saved, and it was, Kakuru would affect the future. This throws what is Orange's biggest flaw in your face like a rotten tomato at a stand-up comedy night in your local bar. We don't get to know how Naho or Suwa or Azu or anyone's life has changed. How their futures are changed. It's all the hypothetical what-ifs that we're left to wonder. Orange has an excellent story, and it's one I'd like to see properly finished in an anime though, truth be told, I haven't seen Orange Mirai, but it seems to expand upon the scenes we get of future Naho, Sua, and the rest of the group. It's not anything we don't already know, just reading the synopsis, but it could explain how the letters were sent back to the past from the future, which is also another glaring problem. So, with an understanding of the darker side to the anime, let's talk about friendship and happiness now. Imagine, how would Kakaru's life have been if he'd never met Naho and the others? Would he be just as unhappy with his life once his mother passed, or would he have found a way to carry on? It's super important to understand that much of Kakaru's anguish was because he didn't get the chance to properly say goodbye to his mother. Naho ignored the letter's warning not to invite him out that first day he transferred from Tokyo. This is under the guise of being friends, and that's fine. It's not like it's some kind of gimmick or that Naho and friends never believed a word he said. They all cared about him, deeply. He was a complete stranger to them, and they went out of their way to not only be his friend and a shoulder he could cry on, but to save him at the end of episode 13. When Suwa speaks up and confronts Kakaru about what he's feeling, explaining that they're friends and he can confide in them, he admits he wants to die. He is truly suffering something immeasurable. However, it's because Suwa always pushed him to open up, especially at such an important time that he proved his friendship, ensuring that Kakaru would have a future. Friends are people you can rely on, but having friends doesn't automatically mean happiness. I fought with my friends before and we've had our differences, but I know when I've crossed the line and when they need help, someone to talk to. Look, we all go through the motions at times, we're human after all. Let Kakaru be a good example of that. His grief pours from him like a fountain. It exudes from every fiber of his being, but at the same time, so does hope, radiance, and happiness. He can laugh, cry, smile, and get angry at times, but that doesn't make him any less human than you or me. In fact, it's precisely because he goes through this roller coaster ride of emotions that makes him human. When he discovers his mother's cell phone that night at his grandmother's house, there are undeleted draft messages from the day she passed. She wanted her son to be happy, but trying to keep him from joining clubs and participating in things he enjoyed was the wrong way to display her love for him, even if she didn't want him to get hurt. She was happy when her son was happy, and these drafts prove it, but they're also a sad reminder that life is short, fragile, and that that bubble could pop at any moment. Now, the reason I mentioned Sua specifically is because I want you to know he had to knowingly sacrifice a future with the girl he loved in order to save Kakaru, and he knew Naho liked Kakaru. Words at face value are just that. Words. Sua's words, however, had a deeper meaning. It was plain to see that he liked Naho. I mean, they're literally married with a child 10 years in the future, but it's because the group held Kakaru in their hearts long after he was gone and never split up makes them true friends. Could Sua have chosen a different path to take? Sure, but he took them on with the greatest likelihood of success despite the setbacks everyone would face. He gave up the one thing he wanted most in life, and that's truly a selfless, beautiful thing. In times of such great divide, we have to remember that we're all human and that we have people who rely on us to make their lives better. It's just a funny way of saying that we have people who enrich our lives. Naho liked Kakaru from the start and showed him what it meant to be a friend. Even when he pushed her away or grew distant, she never stopped trying to reach out to save him when anyone else outside of their group of friends wouldn't have gone the extra mile like that. Take, for example, Kakaru's friends from Tokyo who come out to visit. When he tells them how he's feeling, they think he's joking and fail to take him seriously. This was another major moment that helped to push Kakaru over the edge. In the final episode, he wanders into the road, looking for a way out an escape from the torment, the guilt, the regret, the failure he feels he's become. Whether his fortune of slightly good luck at New Year's Eve is to be thanked for the near miss or not remains to be seen, like maybe the animation studio and writers were looking to present luck as a metaphor, but he lives. 
This is where he learns that life is about the people you surround yourself with, and not those who can't even take the time to ask if you're okay. As he sits there crying, he comes to realize Naho, Suwa, Azu, Nagita, and Takako always cared. They never stopped caring. He realizes guilt and regret are human and that there was no way for him to react to what could or could not have happened to his mother, but no matter how alone he felt, he had people right beside him, ready to break the fall and shoulder his pain. Orange does a great job at representing these very humanistic ideals. The sorrow of regret and pain of regret, the happiness that comes with having a friend, and the security you feel having a true friend. Not someone who says they'll always be there and then walks away however many years down the line. I love this anime because it portrays the good and the ugly in life. We say things we don't mean, we do things we regret, it's all a part of life. The pain of heartache and uncertainty of love, the degrading nature of bullying and manipulation. We are not perfect creatures by any stretch of the imagination, but we are inherently good at heart. And that's what Orange tries to tell us. Every life is fragile, every life has a purpose. Like Kakaru, we have to keep moving forward. Like Naho, we have to protect the ones we love. Like Sua, sometimes we have to make sacrifices in life to benefit the greater good. These are all traits that make us human, and why Orange is so much different than anything else like it.